Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to do a little bit of maintenance on the tractor. We're going to wash it up, scrub it down a little bit. We got the old Husky pressure washer there. Uh, like my friend Nelson from IP Farm says, pennies on the dollars. Guys, I got that for 50 bucks. Not bad. Uh, I replaced the pump that was uh, $75 on Amazon and it starts on the first crank works like a champ so hey 125 bucks you can't beat it guys let's get this thing going here crank it up. hey guys thanks for viewing our channel we got a busy one today uh, this video has three different parts the tractor maintenance uh, moving the cattle and uh, working on my daughter's closet cabinet so stick around guys uh, check the whole video out um, woodwork the cattle the uh, green irrigation on the pasture appreciate you guys thank you Get you a different angle here guys welcome back guys we're gonna let the cows into greener pastures here we just grabbed the little bull that we're gonna sell at the sale yard so the cows are ready for this come on girls greener pastures and uh, so we irrigated this uh, a week ago and you can see guys it's beautiful um, so it's been rough guys it's been hard out here so we got some good grass and like uh, some of the farmers go to rejuvenation of rolling hay we don't roll hay we just dump it and you can see the difference um, where I dump hay all the way back so it does work guys uh, so here we are we're getting out of here taking a little calf to the cell yard to get rid of it hey guys check out Hefner Farms if you have a chance uh, check out his YouTube channel his links under our uh, title there give the, his channel a subscription let him know uh, South Texas cattle and hay sent you his way appreciate you guys uh, he's got a good little channel there well we're still working on it guys <laughs> So you guys, these are uh, deck screws that I put into the um, into the wood. Now you have to remember that this will have a crown in this area here, so you won't see those, but they mean for a solid connection there. Um, I do have uh, insets and uh, different things that I can use uh, to support this thing. But this thing is well glued up and it's it's not going anywhere guys it's going to be inside it's small it's not something huge and uh you know i mean it's going to be in the closet yeah it'll be a little extra drawer for t-shirts shorts for my daughter uh socks things like that um, i have one built but these things look beautiful guys they go in there perfect I'll keep you posted guys it's getting late it's really cooling that not cold uh, just it's getting comfortable we're in the 90s already in South Texas guys and uh, I prefer working out when it's a little cooler 
we'll keep you posted well guys we're doing a little bit of sanding some fine sanding um, I'm rounding out these edges just a tad and this the back part here rounding off these edges just a tad um, especially when you're doing your own woodworking stuff uh, rounding these uh, half round edges is really really important guys because you can jam a finger in there these things are so sharp it will it will hurt it could cut you um, so just giving you a heads up on that we're hitting this with a 320 we sprayed uh, uh, lacquer on it um, lacquer does not turn yellow with time so it always stays that natural color um, so we'll keep you posted guys This is just to knock down any little after spray, any little bubble that may have uh, gotten there. So it's just a fine little sanding, guys, just to smoothen it out. We'll wipe them down a little while. Keep you posted. So guys, today I'm using the Rust-Oleum lacquer. I'm pretty good with these spray cans. I've been doing this a long time. I do have a... Uh, uh, sprayers with a compressor and stuff like that, but it's a real small job So I'm just gonna use this stuff rust-oleum lacquer. Like I said, it uh, dries clear. It doesn't stain with time and guys I don't buy uh, Finishing sandpaper. I use my orbital sander uh, pieces um, And they've always worked real well um, No need to go buy some more uh, expensive sandpaper and stuff where this stuff does good well, when I do, I roll them up like this to get these little grooves in here. And like I said, this is just a fine little groove. And just go, you know, four or five times and I'm done. Um, so stand by, guys. I do have steel wool, guys. But steel wool, sometimes if you have a little burr, you might get a piece of the steel wool stuck in that burr. And it's just going to lift your wood more. Um, steel wool you probably don't want to use it till about your third uh, coating where you know there's nothing that's going to stick out to get a, a final little finish on it but um, you know you could go either way steel wool uh, 320 or 400 um, you're, you're, you're good with that all right guys so I'm gonna blow it off get all this dust off it Guys, one thing I can tell you about inlay is when you're running your inlay, um, your inlay wood, always use the same um, lumber or your strips from the same board. And I'm going to show you why. So I was running a little, little low on wood. But you see this wood here, this inlay here is dark. And then you come to this board and it gets a little lighter. And that strip right there, my friends, was because I um, got another piece from another board and you're gonna have that offset color. So always try to use your inlay from always the same board that you're you're gonna be cutting all your strips or your your CNC or whatever you're gonna use always try to use from the same board because you're gonna have different colorations it's minor but I can see it I don't know if the camera's showing any any uh, difference there but you 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 can see it you can see a different coloration or at least I can so always do that guys all right, I'll keep you posted as we go along. 